right, this is audio. One, two, three. Hi there, El Scorchy here. This time in 1080p resolution. Whoa. My hair is a mess and I'm out of hair product, so that's why I'm wearing this. And today we're gonna talk about The Gamer. So you might have heard of The Gamer before. Zero reviewed their tier list and it was a shit show. So it turns out a couple of days ago, I randomly ran into one of their videos on YouTube called 10 Super Smash Bros. characters who are OP and 10 who are worthless. And I thought it'd be an interesting watch. Let's get into it. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is finally here, so we decided to try every single character on the roster out. I love how they brag about playing with every single character. Like, that's like, wow, you played every character. Wow. In doing so, we not only found some characters we'd recommend, but plenty of characters you should avoid as well. With a roster as big as this one, it could be hard to find the right character for you. So let's help you with that. That's true. So far, they're, they're right. I, I want you to help me, the gamer. Help me find my new main in Ultimate. When we were first introduced to Marth in Super Smash Bros. Melee, we were instantly in love. He's an incredibly popular character in the Super Smash Bros. series, being used by pro players like Zero. Marth? Zero doesn't play Marth. Zero plays Lucina. Marth is still among the best of the best. He has very long range and is good with spacing due to the tipper on his sword. Just a tip, baby. Inkling from Splatoon may be new to the game in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but as Nakat shows us, she's already made one heck of an impact. Nakat? You mean Nakat? <laughs> Alright, <laughs> okay, dude. I mean, they're right, Marth, Inkling. They're really good characters. I wouldn't put Marth as number one, but you know, all right, you know, so far, so good. Sheik has typically always been a solid option in Super Smash Brothers, especially if you play like Clash tournaments because she's very fast with powerful smash attacks. Wait, especially if you play like Clash tournaments, are they just shouting out the YouTube channels without knowing who it is? Clash tournaments is not a person. Clash tournaments is an esports org. What are they doing? That's, uh... The amount of research that goes into these videos, but they still get it wrong. Like you can tell that's that's the frustrating part. You can tell they've been doing their research, but they still get it wrong. Like Clash Tournaments, the player, it's in the word. Uh, okay, anyway, how do you do this much research and still fuck it up? That's my question, the gamer. Why? Roy made his Smash debut in Melee along with Marth and has been living in his shadow ever since. Well, kind of. While most of us can't play with Roy like we're Zero, they keep on name dropping Zero in this video. I think they probably saw the tier list and now they want to play nice. Like, hey, we know about Zero. Even though he doesn't even main Roy, I mean, he probably plays it on his streams, but like, at least talk about some actual Roy mains. There's no denying that Simon has the best range in the game. His whip can almost hit players on the other side of the battlefield. That is not a thing. His whip is really long, but it won't go to the other side of the battlefield. That's not... If you have eyes, you can tell that that's not a thing. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Okay, so so far we've we've been going through the top 10 characters list and um, I just want to see who they're going to put as number 10. There's been some questionable choices like Diddy Kong and Roy and the Belmonts as top 10. But uh, let's see what the gamer has in store for us for the 10th best character in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, Bayonetta, you were the most OP character in Smash 4 with that dreaded witch time move that pros actually wanted to ban you from tournaments. Beard Bear shows us Bayonetta in action and she is still absolutely ridiculous. I love how they say she's absolutely ridiculous. Well, you show a clip of her playing in classic mode and you're shooting an item over and over and over. Wow, <laughs> ridiculous gameplay. Jesus Christ. Bayonetta is a top 10 in Ultimate. I highly doubt it. Even if some Bayonetta mains are dropping the character. You know, that was inadequate. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Could be better. But this is where I really want to get in and see some of the hot takes here. Let's get into the top 10 worthless characters, according to the gamer. Now, Mario is rarely ever a bad option. He's just never been a good one. I will say he's been consistently mediocre in Smash. He's never... He's never been a good option. Mario fucking won Evo, dude. We feel for that black camper because Mario's brother Luigi doesn't fare much better in Ultimate. Luigi doesn't fare in Ultimate? He has a literally touch of death combo, which will probably get patched out. But still, you can't have that and be the top two most worthless character in the game. 
do these guys just hate the Mario series? Maybe that's why. Maybe he hates Mario and Luigi. And he's like, I'm just going to put them at the bottom because I hate characters that are easy to play. <laughs> just put them at the bottom. That means they're bad. Just because they're easy to play, that means they're bad. He's always lived in his brother's shadow, and the trend continues in SSBU as he's an even worse option because he's just really awkward to use. Why is that... A if it's awkward to use, but it's still a better character, it's a better character. That's not a reason to say the character is worse. The only move Luigi has that's strong isn't his incredibly powerful kick taunt as much as we love knocking people off the edge with it. It's his green missile side special move. Well, even his up special can do some serious damage if you hit it perfectly, but overall, having two decent moves just isn't going to cut it. Two decent moves? <laughs> Luigi only has two decent moves. <laughs> I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> Kirby was an absolute beast in the original game who could give Pikachu a run for his money. Hey, they look at the Smash 64 tier list. Nice research, guys. Then they fiddled around with the weight of characters from Melee onwards, and he's never been the same since. Oh, that's what made Kirby bad. They just made all their characters heavier. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the hitboxes and frame data. No, 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 no. They just made Donkey Kong heavier, and that just made... That just made Kirby a worse character. That's what happened, guys. Read up on your Smash history, okay? Even in Ultimate, Kirby still has no power, combo ability, or speed. He has an okay area. I love how they say that Kirby has no power and they literally show him using his most powerful move to get a KO on a heavy character. It's like, Kirby cannot do this! And they show you the character doing the thing that they're saying that they cannot do. <sighs> Like most lightweight puffball characters, Jigglypuff was very strong in the original Super Smash Brothers, but became terrible with the weight changes in later games. Yes, after Nintendo 64, Jigglypuff became awful. Yes. Awful. Yes. Burgers hasn't given up on the character just yet, even though he should. Why are you telling players what to do, man? That's fucking rude. Burgers, I apologize on behalf of the gamer. I don't know who you are, but that was fucking rude. How dare you, the gamer? How dare you? Just telling people to drop their character. We wished for a buff in Ultimate, but we just didn't get one. She got buffed in Ultimate. That's like a fact. People know this. That's not... You can go anywhere in the world and ask someone, did Puff get buffed in ultimate and she did so i don't know where they're pulling that from um at this point i'm not even angry i'm just confused like where are these guys getting their information who do they ask for these things because like you can tell once again that they're doing the research like they went back and said, looked at kirby doing very well in match 64 they looked at the older tier lists and they were like yes good character before bad character now because of their weight what? It's like, it's so half-assed. This video is so half-assed. I don't understand it. In Melee and Brawl, they were some of the best characters in the game because it was so easy to cheese opponents through wobbling and zero-to-death chain grabs. <laughs> I love this part because they even they know that that was some cheese right there. <laughs> they knew, they knew. This guy got wobbled. I believe that the guy that made this video got wobbled once and he just like said, fuck it. Most worthless character in Ultimate. <laughs> Foe put the Ice Climbers in action against Pichu, and the little electric mouse gave them a run for their money. An honorable mention to Pichu, who's actually pretty good. Wait, what? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Shoutouts to Pichu, who's actually a really good motherfucker. You put him at the bottom of your tier list. You can't do that. This is the gamer, the gamer.com. Every character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate officially ranked. They put him at the bottom. You can't just do that. You can't just put this guy at the bottom and then come back and be like, actually, Pichu is really good. They, they even said that alone resigns the rat to a cycle of perpetual obscurity and insufferability. No, no, you, you, you can't do that. You can just rewrite your own history like that in like, how old is this article? This article is from December 11, and the video we're watching is from... December 30th. In two weeks, you went from this character is the worst in the game to actually pretty good. <sighs> oh my god, okay. Um, let's... that wasn't even... okay, let's just continue. While Little Mac is very fun to use, he should stick to boxing, because once players can use other things than just their fists, he doesn't do too well. Hey, they got one right! They got one right! 
<laughs> Little Mac, let's go, baby. Let's go, Little Mac. They got one right. VG Bootcamp shows us the character in battle, and while they're good with him, Little Mac isn't a very good option. Once again, using the name of the channel as it were, the person, that's Kony and Tito, like, basic reading ability, my guys. VG Bootcamp is the channel, it's the org. Just just saying, the gamer, you, you should know how to, like, read what's on the screen, but anyway. Pac-Man is one of the most legendary video game characters of all time. Sadly, the Namco superstar just doesn't have the fighting spirit in him. As Bay's X shows in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pac-Man's got one heck of a strong combo game, but that's about it. Ooh, Pac-Man main, so notice you have one of the most, the uh, top 10 worthless characters in the game. Oh boy, oh boy. Seriously, he has no other strengths. He's bad in the air, has bad reach, and has bad recovery. We used bad three times in that sentence, which means that he must be pretty bad. <laughs> Is that how it works? He must be pretty bad then. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can do that with any character. You can say three things, three bad things with any character in the game. That doesn't mean they're bad. Here, I'll do it with Inkling. They have a bad weight. They have a bad disadvantage when you punish the roller and a bad grab range. Like, does that mean Inkling is bad? It's no, 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 my dudes, you can't just do that. So here's the problem. I was gonna cut this guy some slack and be like, you know what, this is for casuals, for people who only play like classic mode and a little bit with their friends and they call it a day. They're gonna forget about ultimate in a month or two from now. And you know, we're being too harsh, like they're not supposed to be competitive. And you know, they're just, you know, making content because they're hyped up about the game and it's very casual. It's for people who just wanna be classic with an easy character. So, you know, I was gonna cut them some slack, but then they say this. Just like EVE Smash, we have so much fun playing with these guys and they're great for the casual player, but they just don't get the job done. And not only that, they keep mentioning top players like Zero and it makes me think like, do they, who are, who is this for? Is it for the competitive? Or for the casual audience, because it's it doesn't work for either. It's bad either way. If you're doing it for casuals, then you're giving them misinformation. If you're doing it for competitive, you're just embarrassing yourself. I don't get it. The gamer, who is this for? Is it for casuals or is it for competitive players? I don't get it. And it drives me mad. <laughs> who watches this? Who asked for this? Okay, and I think we have one more. Now, before all of us, the ultimate most worthless character in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, there's no other way to say it. Bowser Jr. is just pure garbage. Yo, you didn't have to go that hard, the gamer. Man, Smash YouTube is not gonna like this one. And don't forget to subscribe to the gamer for more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate videos like this one. And don't forget to subscribe to the gamer for more videos like this one. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I want to see more awful Smash videos like this. So I'm gonna give it, wow, 1.2 million subscribers. All right, I guess um, I guess you don't have to do much these days. All right, uh, there we go. So we'll see more awesome the gamer Smash Bros Ultimate videos as they come out, and maybe if there's something else that I find really awful, I might give it a shout. Um, other than that, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, which is at least 5% better than The Gamer. I guarantee as much. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.